Hey family, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. It's good to be with everyone again, and I have another word for you from the Lord. But first of all, I want to tell, wish all the moms out there happy Mother's Day, all the spiritual moms, the grandmas, the moms of children, fur babies, adoptive parents, step parents. And maybe those of you who are grieving today, the loss of your mother or maybe a child. I, I have a dear friend who, uh, she's around my age. She just lost her son a few months ago, and she's lost her mother as well. So her name is Lori, if you will keep her in prayer. But I'm coming to you with a word from the Lord, and we're going to, basically it's Happy Mother's Day. and We're going to talk about mothers, but also a little bit about fathers, too, and what God wants to do for you. And he also put it on my heart that some of you have prodigal children that maybe they're away from you. They're not talking to you or your, your relationship is broken. And I'm going to pray for that at the end too, as well as a song. Actually, the Lord gave me two songs, but um, the one that he gave me was mostly about um, our moms and how they pray and everything. So the first thing we're going to do <clears throat> is go to Proverbs chapter 13. 31 Proverbs 31 and let's see I'm going to read out of the um, the NLT my Wi-Fi is going I just had to reconnect it because we've had some bad weather here and even today my mom calls me like four times this morning Kathy I can't get through to you where are you at I'm like mom it's the Wi-Fi so all is well all right, Proverbs 31. And this is the kind of woman that we all want to aspire to be as women of God, as mothers, of sisters, friends, and just in general, this is the kind of woman that the Lord has called you to be as, you know, the Bible says we are daughters of Sarah if we do it without fear. So just remember that we are all Abraham's seed. So if you're a woman, you're a daughter of Sarah, his wife, as well as the seed of Abraham. So this is uh, King Lemuel's mother talking to him, but it reminds me of me, you know, talking to my son, or if you have a daughter, speaking to your daughter. So, you know, put it with the gender that it relates to. O oh, son of my, O oh, son, O oh, my son of my womb, O oh, son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings, which could also be people in high places, business owners. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol. For if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. You know, it could, it could alter your way of thinking in the way the Holy Spirit wants you to think versus what your flesh is doing. Alcohol is for the dying and wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink to forget their poverty and remember their troubles no more. Speak up for those, I love this scripture, verse 8. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. That's part of my calling on this, on this ministry God has given me, but on these uh, social media platforms is to bring justice to those who are oppressed. Because that's Isaiah 61. That's the scripture he gave me. When uh, I started my ministry with my late husband was the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel and he's anointed me to set the captives free. It's, you know, I'm paraphrasing it, but that's in Isaiah 61 and I'll put it in the description. <clears throat> Let me read that again. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless and see that they get justice. Who can find, and this is verse 10, a wife of noble character. And you can also say a woman of noble character. Many of you are waiting for God to send you your husband, your Boaz, and this is the kind of woman of God that you want to be prepared to be whenever God puts you with your husband, just like the Lord is, you know, preparing him to be a man after his own heart who will love you as Christ loves the church. Who can find a virtuous woman and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her. And she will greatly enrich his life. Your husband can trust you. That's, that's a very noble character. 
she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. And that also means um, the way you talk to him, the way he talks to you. But you were always there to cover and protect him in the spirit, as well as he covers and protects you and your children and your home and everything. You don't put your business out there on the streets. You don't put it on Facebook. You don't put it on Instagram. If you're having issues, then you, you, you two need to get together and get on your knees and pray and ask God for you know, for wisdom and direction, and there needs to be repentance and, you know, apologizing to each other. That's what happens to a lot of couples. That's where the devil gets in, like, you know, the little foxes that spoil the vine is pride, and you won't apologize, or you won't admit you were wrong. If, you, if you'll be quick to apologize and repent, you will have a much healthier body and life, but a better marriage and relationships all around whoever you're with. Lord, just, just give me that. All the days of her life, not just some days, but all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax, which is material, and busily spends it. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls or your daughters or if you have children or maybe you have exchange students or you have you know, live-in nannies or um, hired au pairs or servants, you know. It could be anyone, people that clean your house. You you always have a blessing for them or you, you know, you show appreciation to them and you cover them. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. She stays up if she has to, to get things done and to plan for the next day or fix her husband's lunch or get the kids' lunch ready for school, make sure everybody's got clean clothes or shoes are clean, they're washed, they're dried. Um, maybe it's paperwork or it's bills you need to get paid or just whatever. You're preparing to homeschool your kids for the, les the lesson for the next day. The Proverbs 31 woman is a busy um productive woman she's diligent she's not lazy she's not sitting at home watching tv all day while the dishes are piled up in the sink and the laundry's piled up you know have a have a sanctuary home for you to be in but for your husband and children to be in too so that's how god looks at um your stewardship if he can give you more if he can trust you more you might be praying for a new home or a bigger home so what you should do is start taking care of the one you have. If you haven't been, repent, say, Lord, I'm sorry. But God wants to see how you're going to take care of that small apartment before he gives you a, a townhouse or a two-story. So, um, But also you're teaching your children how to take care of their own house. When they see what you're doing, whether you're your mom or dad, you're teaching your kids what to do or what not to do. So... Um, she makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamps burn late into the night. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She plants a vineyard. Maybe you've got some plants growing on your front porch or some strawberries or you're growing some herbs. You know, a Proverbs 31 woman has things going. She's planting and she's moving and she's doing business. Um, and that means going to the grocery store too. <laughs> oh. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. This is like sewing, making things. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She helps those in need. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes sure, and so does Dad, but she makes sure everybody's got something warm to wear. That really... Um, that's a very important thing to make sure your children are taken care of in that respect, too. So, you know, that's that's some that's a little child God gave you, and it's that's what she does. She makes sure her house is warm and there's plenty of blankets, and, and if the wood needs to be chopped and you have a wood burning, so some people still have them or a fireplace. You know, Dad gets out and do that, does that. But if you're a single mom, you're out there doing it, too, or you're, you're working to get money to pay your gas bill. The Lord sees all that you're doing to take care of your family. And if you are a single parent, God is your husband, and he will provide for you. Okay. He said, go ahead and tell him that. Um, and there, there might be some of you watching right now, you know, um, 
being uh, tender about this, but maybe you don't have mom or dad, or maybe you were adopted, or maybe you and your mom aren't speaking, or you haven't seen her in years, well, or both parents are gone. Psalm 2710 says, when my mother and father forsake or leave me, then the Lord will take me up. So if you don't have your parents, the Lord has taken you up and he is your parent. That's how you're being taken care of all this time. You are never alone. And in that, God will sometimes provide, you know, I've seen kids, teenage kids and young kids whose parents just dropped them off and left, you know, things like that. God will take you up and he will put the right people in your life to be a mom or a dad or a a spiritual mom or dad or a parent to you. So if you're watching this video and you don't have a mom or a dad or you've been alone, well, first of all, God is your parent. And think of all the people he's put in your life to mother you or father you. or And it could have been a coach. You know, it could have been like a coach on your, your football team or it could have been a cheerleading coach. It could have been a school teacher. It could have been a grandma at church or it could have been the sweet lady at the bank or the grocery store. And I'm also, uh, I mentor women too. You know what? I've been mentored and I've, I've been an armor bearer and I've been a student and I still am of the Lord. But um, I have a lot of younger women that call me either mother, mama, or mama Kathy. So I consider that God doing that and I'm honored by it. So I am on here spiritually mothering you too to help you become all you can be in the Lord. And this is stuff that God has taught me. But this is also how I've raised my son and how I teach anybody because it has proven very successful and very well for me because his word does not come back void. Amen. And he watches over it to perform it and he will watch over it and watch over you. And maybe, maybe you gave a child up for adoption. I pray the Lord heals you of that and that one day he will put you so you can see each other again and he will restore your relationship if that is what you both desire. Okay. Her lamp burns light into the night. The Lord just showed me that. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns, and purple is also a color of royalty. Her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. And we talked about this the other night. She makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to merchants. You know, she's always doing something to bring money into the house, to help out, to cook, to grow. Her husband is a well-known man in the city or the gates. And he might be um, the boss of a company. He might be the owner of the company. He might be... In politics, he might be a pastor, he might be a lay pastor, you you know, he could be like the head of a construction crew, but he's known because of his integrity. And people that are in leadership were put there by God. God promoted them, not man, because of their heart, their hard work, and they knew how to handle things correctly. And they knew how they know how to lead. And if they don't, then the Lord eventually he'll speak to them or he'll step them down. So that's a word for someone who has a boss that's really been mistreating him. I'm, the Lord said to tell you he's been dealing with him. And you're going to see a change in, in a matter of days. <laughs> she is clothed. Okay, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. I'm having a vision when not, we were kids and teenagers. And my mom was always so enclosed. We would go to the store. We'd go to Walmart or wherever. And... Uh, Ben Franklin and she'd get patterns and my mom would make clothes and she made um, homemade cakes like she took a class and then after my dad passed away she really started doing these things to help take care of her four kids so this I think about my mom she is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future of course we all have been at times scared of things unknown but just remember, fear is not of God. It's perverted faith. So just you can trust the Lord with your future. Because hasn't he brought you this far, even to this video? And that word goes for me too. I can trust him. Um, when she speaks, her words are wise. And she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household. And suffers nothing from laziness. 
Her children stand or rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. You know, eventually she's going to get rewarded and, you know, publicly. Oh, y'all need to go over to her bakery. She's got the best cupcakes. She'll make you whatever wedding cake you want. Whatever you do for the Lord and to take care of your family, eventually it's going to be broadcasted. So just keep doing what you're doing. If you just started a business, a ministry, a YouTube channel, do it for the glory of the Lord and to take care of your family. But, you know, use it to feed the hungry and the poor when the Lord leads you. The way you're going to come out of stuff is by giving and by sowing to those in need. You know, if you have a need, go fulfill that need. Like if you need some money, give it away. If you need some food, go feed someone. If you need clothes, go give some clothes away. You know, take pictures off your walls and go give them to somebody that has a brand new home and they don't ha even have money for rugs. Just be a blessing. Amen. So this is the kind of woman that God is calling all of his daughters to be. And I've I've always said, Lord, make me a Proverbs 31 woman. I prayed that, that he'd make me, my sister, my mom, and every woman connected to me or that I know. So I pray he makes you ladies a Proverbs 31 woman as well. And and if you're in agreement with that and this word is for you, put Proverbs 31 in the comments and God will know what you mean. And gentlemen, if you're believing God to make you the man of God that you're called to be the high priest of your home, then um, just put a uh, man of God in the comments and I'll stand in agreement with you. Uh, okay, so when my mo mother and father forsake or leave me, then the Lord will take me up. Some of you, um, I've had people in the comments tell me that they are separated from their children. They haven't talked to them in years or their kids have left home. They won't talk to them. And that is one of the greatest heartaches a parent can ever go through because I've been there. I mean, we did talk, but it was after he got married and left, it was just like almost zero communication for a while. And I knew there were problems, but we used to talk, not all the time, but we were just very close. And I know how that hurts. And the Lord told me, he said, that's how I feel, Kathy, when my children are away from me, when they're prodigals or they're not talking to me or they're ignoring me. It hurts. So we are understanding the father's heart. Um, so like a while back, uh, someone told me at a women's meeting, she just started crying that her kids weren't talking to her and they, they kind of abandoned her. And she started, you know, she was just telling me her whole story and immediately the Holy Spirit gave me this scripture and this is a scripture I pray over people when they are separated from their children or they're not talking it's Malachi 4 5 Malachi verse uh, chapter 4 verse 5 and I'm reading from the New Living Translation the Lord says look I am sending you the prophet Elijah before the great and dreadful day the Lord arrives it's gonna be great and dreadful when the Lord comes back to deal with his enemies his preaching will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their father or their daddies. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. So if you are separated from your child and you haven't heard from them in a long time or they left on bad or painful terms, I want you to put in the comments, just put the word um, just uh, Malachi or prodigal, either one. And I will know to pray for you and your children. But right now, I pray and I decree and declare Malachi 4 or 5 over you and your children. That God will send the spirit of Elijah before the dreadful day the Lord arrives. And his preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers and mothers to their children, to your children. And the hearts of your children back to you. Otherwise, the Lord says, I will come and strike the land with a curse. And I claim Malachi 4, 5 for you and your children's relationships to be restored. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care where they're at. I command all that distance, that hardness, and that quietness, and that broken relationship to be restored. Many of you have been saying, God, can I please just hear from my child? I pray the Lord lets you hear from your child 
before the week is over, whatever it takes, and there will be repentance and apologies, and that they will call you. Some of you, you have children in the military, and you just haven't heard from them in a while because they're out on mission, they're in boot camp, they're training. I still claim Malachi 4, 5, that they will somehow be able to break through and make contact with you as much as possible. The other thing that the Lord put on my heart is about the honor of a parent. And when we don't honor parents, it can create problems and chaos in our own life. And it may you may even say, well, you don't know how my mom treated me or how my dad treated me. I understand we grow up sometimes with parents that have a lot of unhealed soul trauma. You don't know what they went through as children. Maybe they've never talked about it. But when there's pain and trauma in anybody, it's in our soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions. That's where we feel. And if we are unhealed in there, then it, it will cause us to react in bad ways. I'm not saying it made it right, but try to have mercy and look at them through God's eyes and say, Lord, what did my parents go through? And help me to forgive them. I for, forgive them, even if they're not around anymore. Still release forgiveness to them so you can start to heal. Because Ephesians 6, 2 through 4 says, Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Verse 3, If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers or dads, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up in the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Ask the Lord for guidance and break the cycle of anger and rejection, discouragement, abandonment, father or motherless homes. Be a generational curse breaker in your family. And the Lord said, he sees what you went through as a child. I went through things too that I haven't ever told anybody. But the Lord saw it and he wants to heal you if you'll let him in to heal it. But what you got to do is no matter what you didn't get as a child, or the way the abuse you went through, take it to the Lord because God will take it from you and heal you. And he was there with you the whole time. But the other thing is make a decision in your heart. This is what I did. And this is what the Lord led me to do. And I had good teachers who taught me this. Make a decision that you're going to be the curse breaker in your family. All these curses of lack, poverty, divorce, murder, suicide, drugs, you know, uh, sexual perversion, whatever, witchcraft. Say, Lord, I repent and I renounce all of these sins. Whatever he tells you, write them down on a piece of paper and say, Lord, forgive me and my, my family that's alive and forgive the generations ahead of me or before me. And then say, Lord, I repent and I draw a bloodline, the blood of Jesus between us that are alive and those unclean spirits. Be determined that you're going to be the parent that maybe you weren't allowed to see. And through that, God is going to heal you. But he's going to show you some things that maybe you didn't see. Or maybe things that were never talked about. It'll come around and you'll, you'll start understanding more. So when you honor, and honor is to respect, doesn't mean you always agree with them. I've had people say, I'm going to have a hard time with that one because... I, I can't stand or I hate. Never say hate. Just remember, even if you don't like them, they still carried you and gave you life. And at least a chance to get in the world and start your own life. So um, show them honor because he said this is a first commandment with a promise. God promises you to um, honor your father and mother. He said first things will go well with, with you or for you, which means you're going to live a blessed life. And you're going to have many opportunities that maybe other people don't, and you will have long life on the earth. Sometimes you wonder why things have happened. It could have been how parents were treated and disrespected. You know, you were rebellious. You didn't listen. That's the spirit of witchcraft, according to the Lord. Um, when I officiated the wedding almost a month ago, April 20th, this is something the Lord has told me to do when I... Um, officiate the weddings, you know, when the bride comes to the altar w with her dad or whoever's given her away. And I'll say, who gives this woman or get, who gives this person to be married to? And I'd say their names. And then I'll say, um, and can all of the parents and the bonus parents 
stand as, as well at this time. And they were shocked when I did it, but I could tell it just blessed them so much. And I said, uh, do you also give your blessing on this wedding? And everybody looked around. They said, yes, we do. See, that is a key at a wedding, too, to have the blessing of your parents. Now, if you don't have parents or you don't feel you had the blessing, I pray the Lord blesses you. Because sometimes if we do things out of, well, I'm going to do it anyways. Well, you've opened the door for Satan to come in and start wreak havoc in your life. So if you've done anything in, like that in the past, just ask the Lord to forgive you. Say, Lord, I made this decision out of flesh or out of rebellion or disobedience or stubbornness or pride. I am sorry, Lord, forgive me. Because you don't want that going down to your kids and your grandkids because it can. It's, there's generational curses that says down to the third and fourth generation, but there's generational blessings. And when I got a hold of this word, I said, I'm going to be a, a blessing labor, not a curse. And I want all these curses off of me and my family. So I know this is a, a tender, but it's a powerful word. I want you to receive this into your heart so you can go into healing now and you can start living a more victorious and a more successful life. And let me read the song. And then we will do the prayer of salvation if anybody on here watching uh, would like to make Jesus the Lord of their life if you've never had an opportunity or you want to recommit your life to him because you have been out there in the pig pen like the prodigal son or you've been out in rebellion and disobedience and you've been in places you know you shouldn't be and you've been doing things you know you shouldn't be this is your your day because the Bible says today is the day of salvation so all right so there was the song the Lord gave me originally um and then he gave me one today for my mom, but I have played it for um, Mother's Day, too. Okay, it's called Prayer Warrior. You may have heard it before, but it's by the group Heirloom. Prayer Warrior lyrics, if it will pop up. Here we go. Prayer Warrior. So this is your moms, your dads, your sisters, your grandmas, your, your praying mamas in the church. You may see her in the grocery with her children or in the city nine to five each working day. She's a mother or a teacher or a woman all alone, but she's someone else entirely when she prays. Amen to that. <laughs> she's a prayer warrior down on her knees wrestling with powers and principalities, standing in the gap for others, for her sisters and her brothers, reaching heaven with her heart, prayer warrior. We don't see her lonely nights of intercession or praying for you or the tears she sheds with every whispered prayer. We may not see the secret things hidden in her heart, and that could be pain. That could be trauma. That could be rejections that your mom has went through, disappointments. Maybe she was in a relationship before and was cheated on and she still needs healing from it. Pray for your parents, too. Your parent, parents aren't perfect. We're just doing the best we can, you know. But your parents were once teenagers, too, and they once had dreams, visions. They wanted to go to school. They had or wanted to be a nurse. You, you just don't know. So they had their times in high school and playing around. <laughs> We don't see her lonely nights of intercession or the tears she sheds with every whispered prayer. We may not see the secret things hidden in her heart, but the eyes of God are watching her with care. The eyes of God are watching you with care right now and always. She's a prayer warrior down on her knees, wrestling with powers and principalities. She's wrestling with them spiritual wickedness in high places through her prayers, through her intercession, through her tears, through her fasting. You know, I'm thinking of that movie War Room, you know, where the woman created a room in her closet and that's where she went to war and went to prayer. Well, technically your prayer closet is your heart. It's your secret place, but you could have a room set aside. For me, mine is my car. That's when I really let it out, but I go in my closet occasionally and I just sit there and, and take it to the Lord. So she's a prayer warrior down on her knees, wrestling with powers and principalities, 
standing in the gap for others, for her sisters and her brothers, <clears throat> reaching heaven with her heart. And this is my favorite um, verse in the whole song. And we'll never fully know the debt we owe her. For we'll never know the evil we've been spared. The many nights she's crashed through Satan's strongholds, reaching heaven with her prayers. And that goes for you mamas and grandmas and aunts and sisters and daughters and cousins, how you have been on your knees or your face or sitting in the floor in your bedroom crying out to God. You, you know, you, you have caused a lot of change in the atmosphere and the spirit realm for people to come to Christ, to, to receive healing, to receive a job, you know, whatever they're praying for. So thank you to all of you who pray for me in this channel because I'm seeing the change and I'm feeling it. And I'm praying for you too. God bless you. <laughs> so let me read that again. And we'll never fully know the debt we owe her, for we'll never know the evil we've been spared. The many nights she's crashed through Satan's strongholds, reaching heaven with her prayer. She's a prayer warrior down on her knees, wrestling with powers and principalities, standing in the gap for others, for her sisters and her brothers, reaching heaven with her heart. Oh, you have touched the very heart of God. Prayer warrior. The song goes, prayer warrior, and they say it three times, prayer warrior, prayer warrior. So just know that you are making a difference if you don't feel like you are. Just know that your prayers have been heard by the Father. You know, sometimes there's warfare going on up above us, and the, and the angels of God are moving and fighting on our behalf. Just keep praying, because Jesus, that was one of the things Jesus had was a very strong prayer life. And as a believer, we need to have a strong prayer life and talking to God because that's intimacy with the Lord. That's a way to have oil in your lamp is intimacy with the Lord every day, not just, oh, hey, Lord, it's me. I know, I know we haven't talked to you in like three weeks, but could you do this? You know, it's look at it as a, a marriage when you come in home to your spouse and you, t you pretty much talk to him every day. I'm not saying all the time, but you, you have conversations that's the way it should be with your Heavenly Father and in conversations of gratitude. And I love you, Lord. And thank you so much for all you've done for me. So, and I'm going to drink a water. That's the song Prayer Warrior by the group Heirloom. It's an older song, but I still love it. So I never want to close a video without giving anyone watching the chance to receive Jesus or accept him as your Lord and Savior. What a great day to do it on Mother's Day. And you come into this and become a Proverbs 31 woman, a part of the Bride of Christ, the family of God. So I'm going to read to you out of Romans 9, 10 through 13. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. The Lord, the Lord has, uh, he's no respecter of persons. He has no favorites. He loves us all the same. And anyone that calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So that's why it's important that we share the gospel and the good news of salvation. Because there's a lot of people that's never heard of it. Or what they're involved in, they really want out of it. Their heart has been crying for a release to, to have something better and something real. Or to have something tangible. So we have to be that tangible um representation of Jesus Christ where people can come to him. So I want to pray with you right now that if you want to accept or confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you're tired of being in the pig pen and you're ready to come home for your Heavenly Father to put the ring on your finger and you know butcher the fatty calf and that just means blessings and him having a celebration 
you know, the, the prodigal son, when he came home, he thought, because he had demanded his inheritance and took off, and the Bible says he went into riotous living. He was partying. He was sleeping around, and he spent all he had, and then one day he came to himself, and he's sitting there in the pig pen. He, he can't eat. He says, wait a minute. My father's servants are eating better than I am, and he went back home, but his dad, this is what gets me. His dad had been looking for him every day. Every day he went out there to see if he was coming home. And that's what your Heavenly Father's been doing. He's been looking for you. And you may not think he hasn't. It, you know, it doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. All, all it takes is one step to repent. And it's God gives you a clean slate through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The, the righteousness of God is hovering over you right now. And you feel it by His Holy Spirit in the room with you. So I want you to close your eyes and... Just for a moment, just focus on Jesus and just repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior, and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead and that you died on the cross for my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Forgive my sins. I repent. I make you the Lord of my life. Give me your heart and will in exchange for mine. I give you my heart and will. I bind this. Right now there's a battle going on for somebody right now. I'm feeling it. Devil, you get out of that room right now and you get off of them. You don't, they don't belong to you anymore. They belong to Jesus and they're coming home. Loose them in Jesus' name. Say, Jesus, I surrender my will and my life to you. Take over. I make you the Lord of my life. And say, Jesus, fill me with your Holy Spirit and baptize me in your fire. I'm saved. I'm yours. And you're mine. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Whew, I feel the strongholds breaking right now over you. There's a young man or a man watching this, and you've really been into, you've been into some darkness, but the Lord has brought you. And this, anybody that prays this, doesn't matter who it is, Colossians 1.13, for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of peace, of mercy, but of power. Hallelujah. You are now part of the family of God, the bride of Christ. Praise God, you were on your way to hell, now you're on your way to heaven. You have a kingdom assignment. I pray the Lord leads each one of you to get water baptized in, in the way and the place he wants you to. It's a symbol, another you know, public profession of faith that's going down into the water like a sinner. All, all of that is cleansed by the blood and the washing of the water, the word, you come up a new creation. And it symbolizes kind of like the old man going in the grave because Jesus was baptized too. So we just follow his example. And I know the Lord's going to lead you where to go. So um, oh, my heart is just really feeling this for this battle that was over someone watching this and praying this for your soul. And I saw uh, a, like a saying one time, it said, "How imagine how precious a soul is for satan trying to steal it and jesus trying to save it that's how precious you are yeah you've been in the occult i can see it but you've renounced it and you need to repent and renounce it off your family too and some demons are coming out and you're getting free don't fight it just let the lord do it this, that fire that you're feeling is the fire of the holy ghost and you may scream because i some unclean spirits coming out because they don't like the fire of god and i command you to come out in the name of jesus and let this child of God go. They belong to Christ now. Ooh, I just felt that. So hallelujah to the Lamb and to the blood of Jesus. Whew. Fire is all over me too. See how red pink my cheeks are? <laughs> Look at my chest. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. And I know it's on many of you right now because he's burning things off of you too. I know a lot of you, you tell me, I pray this with you, Kathy, every time you pray. I do every time at church or anywhere I prayed it today because I just love it. And I love the, the, the Holy Spirit. Whew. So many of you right now, you've made this, 
you know, your confession of faith and you tell me and you put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. I'm going to pray for you anyways. That's just a public declaration and you're just giving the, giving the enemy a black eye. I belong to Jesus now. Hallelujah. That's the biggest reason why we're here to win souls. Jesus said, wise, is he, wise are they who win souls, for they will receive a crown of life. I'm okay. Well, I'll give my crown back to Jesus. It belongs to him, but at least I could see who one day in heaven who I led to the Lord. <laughs> um, if you are, first of all, I just want to appreciate and bless all of my subscribers. You guys, we have just been growing exponentially in leaps and bounds. And I know we're over a thousand sixty or more now. We just keep growing. So if you would like to subscribe to the channel and receive more words and messages that the Lord gives me, you know, this is a uh, like an online church. I'm not calling it a church, but it's a ministry, and we are like an online church. Um, if you'd like to receive more messages, just hit the little uh, bell icon on the right side of your screen and hit the word all. So every time I upload a video, it will come to your notifications. And please feel free to share this with anybody you know that would be blessed or needs to hear this. Also, if you'll hit the like button on the left hand side, the little thumbs up, then that puts this in the YouTube algorithm for more people to receive these messages when they need it at their right moment. You know, because God is all about his healing and his salvation. So thank you for those who have been sharing this and putting it into the YouTube algorithm or you've been sharing it on Facebook or um, I saw where someone shared it a, about a week ago and they put it on their, their YouTube channel. That is how the gospel and the message of Christ is getting all over the world. And the Lord blesses you and honors you for it. You will see the fruit of it one day, not only in your life, but in the kingdom of heaven. You'll see your fruit. Of, okay, well, I'm going to send this to so-and-so. Don't worry about who you send it to, because sometimes the enemy will say, don't you send that to them. They'll get mad at you. They won't ever want to talk to you again. So what? They'll come back. They, you know, i got to get the gospel to them. Now, if the Lord says, wait, it's not the right time yet, you'll know, because he's a gentleman. So please uh, share this, and also all of the scriptures that I went over tonight in the psalm will be in the description. And I had somebody ask me today, where where is the description? Where the title of this video is, and I put the, you know, the emojis and the hashtags. Underneath it should be the word description, but if you don't see description, there will be like... Um, the word more, like there's more to it. You know how you have to drop down so you can finish reading everything. So click more and you might see it there. But look for the scriptures and then you will see everything in there. And read them and take notes and see what the Lord shows you. So that is the message for the, from the Lord. Happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful moms. And I pray and decree that you start a new day in your life as a mom, a sister, and you're going to become a Proverbs 31 woman. Man, you are going to be mighty men of valor, the leaders of your home, and you're going to lead your children in peace, not anger and not aggravation. Some of you grew up being aggravated, and I just decree peace to all that, and that doesn't bother you anymore. Sometimes, you know, you get picked on, and I know how that is. That's happened to me, too. Um... And even when I was a kid. So I love you all and I'm praying for you. If you have any questions, prayer requests, also my email is in the description if you want to email me privately. I check my emails every day. I check the comments every day and I'll get back with you as soon as I can. And I will see you in the next video and I appreciate you all. Okay, bye-bye.